Hello, and welcome to Steel Division 2. Today we have a actually a request from a viewer, or just somebody I know on the Discord, to cast this game. And we've got uh, Panzerlea versus the 29th Tank OV Corpus right here. Interesting battle here. We've got Pierre Tanner on one side, Division 1 player, quite good at the game, and an up-and-comer. Squire uh, star deck over here from Homo Tango's Little Kingdom. Uh, I definitely think we'll be seeing more of star deck as the league's advance. He's quite a capable player, and I don't think his position, current position in the league is quite reflected. But uh, just from the start here, two Tanko Desaniki, Zagmachiki, and Stroke SVT. Two more Tankos, Strokies again, motorcycles smoking off this town, and then moving up. Agnumachiki coming to the center, Resvedka, T3045, and a 37mm. Four Maxims, Resvedka, a Zis 3, two Zis 3s here. For Stardeck, Flamers, Pioneers, Panzerschek, uh, Panzergrenadier coming in there. Uh, the 234-2 Puma, another 234-1 over here, that's the 20 mil one. Yak Panzer, Panzer 3. Gets into the town fine, but just avoiding the Puma, being able to snipe anything, I would wager. Uh, Puma's here in a somewhat decent position if they can get closer to the C3485, but uh, they can go down quite quickly. It's actually... Ooh, the Puma is not firing at the T3485, but it does have side shots right now. Armored car in the north, and this position here, just uh, waiting to clear up, no doubt. Smoked off by the Flamme Alpha. Good use of smoke there. We'll save the Puma. Puma could potentially come around into this yellow cover here and be quite the annoyance for side shots, but uh, he'd have to also get something with a little more range on that T3485. This 1944 variant, I do believe, is the version with the 2K uh, range that does get the snipe on the Puma, not quite being able to reverse out of there. Actually, using most of the smoke on these flamers to just create a gigantic wall as the 250-1 and the other Puma retreats. 251-1 does go down though, Panzer Shrek though, does get into this yellow forest. Not sure how much of a use that'll be, but does definitely put influence onto this hill. So Tanner will have to call something else in as we see the first Panther coming in as a direct counter to this T-3485. Now these Panther Ds, they do only have the, I believe the 140 uh, frontal armor. So the T-3485 still has to be quite careful of it, uh, but Certainly, it's a fight that can be worth taking, especially with the double vet on the T-3485. If you get the first shot off with some good accuracy, that could be quite easily a dead Panther. Which is why you don't see a lot of Panther Ds, besides their utility in A uh, coming in with more availability. Not too amazing. For the price, at least. Gorilla, good position firing here, a bit early, but I suppose we'll see that change. 231, meanwhile in the north, let's take out the one flamer that was protecting over there. Maximum's going down to the 231 over here. This gun is moving up. Ooh, and it actually gets a shot with that gorilla. But the gorilla is dangerously close to the T3485 before the panther can actually arrive here. And it is almost in range. So that gorilla has to be careful. This uh, fire position order is actually something to be aware of. If you get a fire position, it's not going to shoot one shot here and then one shot there. It's just going to keep shooting as the Puma does go down. And so uh, queuing up orders like this doesn't actually work. You really have to pay attention to the micro on those. Well, it does fall back as the T-3485 starts to get engaged by the Panther. And because it was moving, less accurate. The Panther does get the opening shot, meaning uh, this Panther is going to have to fall back slightly. Both of these mortars, though with their turn uh, fire command. He's setting up to drop bombs on there when the units finally advance into there, which is a good preemptive move if you are looking to work to uh, uh, use mortars effectively in that in that way. Mortar carrier down south though. There's another Strelke SVT up here and no units that can provide uh, a boost to the front line. So the flag does go back in favor of Tanner for the time being, as we see two PTRS squads moving up here. 
231 though, dangerously close to that historic ESVT. And uh, Gilly went down in the center here as well from the T3485 on the road. Mortars did fire off and are now going to be smoking off that Panther, or at least trying to as it aggressively pushes forward trying to get under that T3485. SBW does get the kill on that Strzok SVT as we see the first Boston come out for that Panther. Definitely got view range on it. Another Yak Panzer IV coming down. The other one ooh, looks like it went down. Yeah, side shot it from the Zis 3 over here, I would wager. Which he's now shooting at with artillery fire. Boston does drop onto that Panther D. Panther D was stopped, so it might actually manage to avoid things, but uh, actually getting shot at now is the bombs. They do whiff a little bit. The Boston's not being known for their amazing accuracy. But as the Panther is stressed now, it does lose um, accuracy, but the T-34 I'm on ammo already? <laughs> Do these only come with like 5 AP shells? What the hell? 20 AP shells. It's already used all of them. It does get the fallback on that Panther. But uh, almost out of ammo here. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a T-3485 run out of ammo that quickly. Two PTRS have, having smoked themselves off will likely get the kill on that 234-1. LA-5 still out though, and Panther D getting smoked off here. Good use of smoke by Stardeck. Another Panzer Shake squad coming in. Pioneer moving into this forest. Gotta be careful with those stroke SETs, but also the flame thrower is uh after the flamer buff, these TNTs are never gonna go off go off. And uh, especially not at zero vet though. We do see a 231 here as the Akumachiki goes down to the mortar fire. Ooh, actually great use of the mortars and gets the surrender, but pins down his own unit in the progress. LA5. Trying to get on shot there to that Fokkabuth, but uh, not quite happening yet. As the mortars give some cover and fire to these Strelkies here. Panther D finally recovers. We see another Flak 88 coming in. Second T 34 moving up here. You know, I'm very low on ammo. Haven't zoomed up the hill. Now the gorilla is in here, as long as the Sokla is in the middle of the road, that this three should be spotted. Good use of recon here, good good to micro, good micro from Star Deck to um, make it so that that Elf Dara doesn't jump into any of these buildings as auto cover. It does have to be manually turned off. Gorilla though firing at that this three before it can get into range. We'll likely get the kill. Couple more shots for accuracy. As uh, the T-34s actually rotate all the way down, leaving absolutely nothing in the center here to stop this Panther. Not a ton of recon though in here. Uh, so we do see an Elfclair come in and actually. Look at that. Bunch of infantry down here. Pioneer moving forward again though. As the Panzer 3 and the Yak Panzer 4. Do move forward. Not sure if Stardeck would have seen these. But it's certainly something to be worried about. This three did go down. Building out firing. And a very large investment in units here to try and take out this uh, 231 of the Pioneer. The PTRS not doing their jobs earlier. Good fire from the Gorilla though. Just a slight miss, which often happens with these. And it hits one of these buildings, and these units just get completely chunked. Uh, when you do see your opponent firing like this, it's sometimes best to get out of the building, because if the building gets hit like we just saw there, the units take a lot more damage. That was a, like a five health squad going out to two or something. Really like giving good firing support to this stuff in the middle that this uh, Elkara on the 250-1 has spotted. But not on load just yet. 
mortar's actually in the open. Can't fire on that 88. Struck SVT in the meaning covers is the two star Panzer Grenadiers. Really continuing the fire down in the center here. As the SBW catches more units out. So, forcing here Tanner, the 29th Tank Omega Corpus, which doesn't actually get a lot of infantry to bring in more T 34s. First Katusha coming up for Tanner. Pack 40 as well. Uh, having smoked off this position, this actually gives the Pack 40 a great opportunity to get in quite close. As more smoke comes down here, actually to cover off this entire thing. And then if that pack 40 can get within, well, 1500 meter range, it'll provide excellent uh, covering fire for the Ekpanzer 4. Ekpanzer 4, though, does get in range, is, is just moving forward, uh, so it doesn't quite see the T 3485s for whatever reason. Is aiming now. And actually. Started gonna pull that back. Ooh, double shot though on the Ekpenza 4. That's not what you like to see. Pack though is in position. Now the Panzer Grenadier, as the Grilla actually gets a shot at target on this mo mortar, it does go down. Very dangerous to be using your mortars like that. Dual Katusha is likely going to be aiming for this uh, Flak 41. I expect to see some kind of uh, airplay after this, but there is a Gepard here, so something to be aware of as the Gilly goes down to the repositioning T-34-85s. Panther though, ooh, just out of view range, Tanner does pull these back, rightfully so. The penetration drop off at that distance being a lot worse than if they were at, say, 1500 meters with their 145 pen. More half track home side ammo here. Opal Blitz coming in for that. 300 mil Nibelwaffe as well. Very powerful tool. And in fact, if this counter batteries the Katushas, that would be disgusting. <laughs> but Tanner, very good player here. I would hope that he moves his Katushas before they can get any shenanigans. And to be using Resvetkas here as um, pure recon is quite dangerous, I would say. Well, not dangerous, but almost a waste of units. Uh, multiple Boston's coming in. Interesting that we see that uh, on the north here, but there is no AA at this point yet, as both Boston's completely decimate these uh, Panzer Grenadiers here. Not the most accurate bombers, but uh, ooh, this one's got the thousand kilogram bomb. These might have been two with thousand kilogram bombs. Which uh, would explain just why they did so much damage. Opa Blitz coming in for the Gilda here, actually. Stardick did start on the better side of the map here. These two flags being right at the beginning is very much hamper. Oh no, wait. No, these are two blue flanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tatter's down uh, due to due to this flag here. T thirty four did clean up the SBW, and now the superior can clean up that Pioneer. Should should put it back to a twelve to twelve relatively soon here. Gilla reloading. Uh, should put a stop to any more attempts at an assault here, as the Tanko Desanikis do get somewhat close. Is this two though? Bit out of position. Looks like he unloaded it early, and we'll be just be moving it across to fire at that Panzer 3 as the Katushas finally fire. Looks like they're repositioned for that pack, that uh, Flak 88 being falling back already. Are these the... No, these are the 132mm Katushas. That's quite interesting because that's basically no damage. Quite unlucky there. Back 40 though. Oop, get shots on that T-34 and Tanner doesn't see it. Should have the penetration. On the AP shells. Oh, sees it now. And uh, the first shot actually forcing the pack 40 to move. That's always annoying when that happens. Just one pioneer though, moving in to fight off at this Tango Decide Niki. That'll be a very interesting battle. As the M4A1s actually. 
Molotov kills off early and gets a 250 dash one. <laughs> gets back into the half track. Uh, and the pack 40 fails to penetrate the T3485. Ooh, I missed an engagement down here. Both the T34s went down. One down here, likely to the pack 40 as it moved. And the other. Ooh, the other entered the forest, which, uh, versus that, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Every single one of these Panzergrenadier squads comes with the Panzer Shrek, which does make them very much a danger to any armor and medium cover. You do have to be quite aware of that when facing these uh, units. The only saving grace really is that they are forced to come in in half tracks, and, well, half tracks are just not, um, not fast, so you're, you're lacking Panzer Grenadiers and fast transports there. For that purpose. Really getting shots on target there. Was this two also getting shots like in this half track. Nibivafa shooting at this area. Pins down his own unit though. Looking to blast quite large there, maybe over expecting this. Uh, Nibivafa is going to reposition as the more half track shoots again. A couple other half tracks coming in here though. And now that 231 does see the tank with Descent Niki, that'll get pinned down for quite a bit longer than this Panzer Strike allowing uh, Stardeck to secure this little forest here. And with that, there is a PTRD over here, but there's no real armor or anything to counter these these half tracks to quite annoyingly push into these units. However, first IS2 coming out. Grant that he's definitely got to be careful of that. Lots of AA for it as well, so no shenanigans with any AT planes for there. Lots of units in this here in the north that are never going to really pay themselves off, being not only a T-34 needing to go in, but also multiple infantry units to clear out what amounted to a single 231 and a Pioneer, so not a very effective trade up north there. Ooh, the stroke, he did get in range of that Panzer Grenadier, and uh, those SVTs did do good work from the looks of things. If the Pioneer had moved in with it, that would have been quite good, and now the half tracks alone, the TRD should do a fine job from the green cover here. Katusha's aiming at the forest again, as the fire support from the Gilda doesn't enable the Shulm Pioneer to pick up the surrender there. Shulm Pioneer here, though, getting absolutely Close range, long range. Not gonna happen. As a check, shooting uh, just the rifles. That's PTRS here. Should go down fairly easily. Back 40 as well. Getting shots on a T34. Oh, ammo explosion on what I would wager was another Panzer Grenadier. That has been unloaded. So multiple T3485s with we'll CIs to start pushing forward, trying to put more pressure under these center flags here. Katusha is splitting their fire instead. One more trying to go for the pack 40 and the other trying to finish off that flock 41. Moving out of range of the, of the Panzer Strike here. And the PTRS as well. T-345 gives good covering support after killing the Martyr, which was hanging around up north here. Katush is firing. I still getting shots on, uh, not just a bunch of units over here, but the half track. And not too far from Panther D either, as there's actually quite a concentration of units for Tanner. As we enter in the last little bit of Phase B. Another Panther coming in here. There's some Panther A, a little bit more reliable than the Panther D, <laughs> as the uh, full farm or the uh, the Nib of F at 300 mil does target that IS-2 and gets good suppressive fire on it. No kills or anything, but that uh, IS-2 is very stressed out and yet not very accurate. And now, <laughs> please unload these half tracks. Stone Pioneer goes down. Panzer Strike finally unloads. Uh, Panther likely coming in for the attempted side shots here. 
just has to advance it forward and this panther can then uh, show, its, show itself from behind these buildings. And likely kill that IS-2, so we're getting very dangerous pushing that that far forward. As the Nibavefa here as well tries to target that IS-2. But IS-2 just moving forward, doesn't even see the Panther D and gets side shot. Not even needing uh, the other Panther to come in and deal with it. And now the Panthers, well, like I said, this Panther D might not quite have the ability, but uh, at max range, still very dangerous. Just got one penetration. Does these T-34s keep missing? Bilbalind, another Boston bombing run. It's taking up some stress damage, but the first T-34 is gunned down. Gephardt is well firing, and that's one dead Boston. Jack Panzer 4 and the Panther Ray now getting side shots as well on the T-3485s. Pack 40 actually getting the finishing kill there from the looks of things. And they all go down. That's um, IS-2 plus multiple T-34s. Not what you like to see. Coming straight out of B phase, there's really not the income to replace those losses. Single T-3485 coming out now. And we do have one more on the field here. Which we'll get the kill on this Panzer three here. Together with the Zis there. Looks like Katusha Barrage on the Vobovin, but um, this is an armor with my feeling, so it looks like it did survive quite handily. More fire and come down. Looks like preemptive more fire on this unit. It'll be very useful. This Pioneer can then wake up and throw TNT. Oh, the Sardex sees us. He's got a cheeky two uh, surrenders real quick. But maybe not. But as long as these are still pinned down. And if this other stroke gets in range of that TNT. It doesn't look like it though. It doesn't have G range, which is what the stroke he does want to take. Warriors firing again. Pioneer will go down here without throwing its TNT. Kill it advanced up quite heavily. Pack 40 and T-3485 squaring off as the Nibavefa get shots on, trying to kill this infantry again. But Panther's in the center here, ruling the sky. <laughs> the sky, the center map here, as, uh, hmm, looks like the Panther did eventually go down. If I could find it. Sometimes a mystery. It couldn't have gotten too far from here. Hmm, potentially a Katusha barrage or something catching that. 88 did go down on the hill finally after a massive investment here from Katusha's supply. One supply truck being completely empty as the half tracks push into these uh, mortared down troops and completely surrender them. And make them fall apart. There are quite a few Stroke ADPs still over here, but they are pinned down. And Mortifier is still coming in. Wilfa as well, at some range. Just trying to prevent cover and firing where he thinks is most of the enemy. Wilfa, once again, has moved, has moved into a building, so doesn't, uh, Star Trek doesn't quite see what's over there. But Panther A field are coming out over here now as well. Surprised he has the points for this. But coming off the B phase income, it is sometimes li likely to see uh, players floating points and such. Gotta be careful of this is too. Um, if he's not careful, that is a Panther that's just gonna drive straight into an AT gun. Get side shotted, but uh, not too accurate on the first shot. Shot one down. Shot number two. Might get out of range here. Three. It's gonna be a bounce. Even if it does hit. And crit as the driver gets knocked down. Give a VFA firing on that AT gun though. That's, uh, this is too snipes with Gilda. Potentially that was a T-34 here. This puzzle strike at the very beginning finally going down. 
half track, not bad, quite managing to get, get these units as uh, this too does shut that down. There's a res vedka still over here that uh, Stardick would have to be careful of. The 231s are getting quite close, and the unloaded Pentagon idea as well. This too might be able to get the kill on that Yak Pencil 4, but not as things stand. Two 231s here. Not only the AT again, but also the res vedka. One's gonna go down right away. Nope. This is firing um, the Yak Pencil 4. This is its second shot. Mortar coming down now. It does get the kill. But Mortar's likely going to finish that off if the Panther doesn't. Boston coming in as well. That's the rest of it. it. takes one for the cause. This flag going up here looks like those units did eventually advance out of this position, but without armored support, uh, 231 and 250-1 are just going to clean up if that PTRS doesn't get quite on range. Still Pioneer coming in, Panzer Shrek. Really, Tanner almost needs to save up for another IS-2 to get where he wants to go. Niv F firing at an empty position here. Might have been better used at the AA, but we really haven't seen any air power here from Stardex game. Um, that does get some nice Fokovos, but they are at the expense of quite expensive slots a lot of the time. So it's a trade between taking one or two planes or another squad of infantrymen or another platoon there. So quite often, not the trade you want to be taking necessarily. Tenko does get surrendered here. T-34 does get on the range of the 234. It will go down. Because uh, the tanks that were over here do get shut down by this Panther from the looks of things. And the Pack 40 that was stubbornly sitting in that position for a million years. One more T-34 down in the south. But uh, if this Panther is used properly, that won't be too much of a danger. T-34 doesn't stand a chance in hell against penetrating a Panther A. Even at 750 meter range, it's like 20% chance, which is just not enough. In fact, Feeling doing a good job, though. Doesn't quite get the... Um, managed to stop it from dropping its bombs, but the plane is then comes in so close to the flak feeling that even unbedded it does take out that Boston. Mortar's now going for the Zenarts. Stroke EDP facing off against Panzerschreck Canadia. Nine Mosins versus seven Calvinas and an MP40. Katusha's um, firing at the Panther. Do get the fall back. And now this T-34 here, ooh, together with the Katusha's, does get the kill on that one Panther. Gephardt moving forward. We'll go down to this T-34, though. That's a little bit actually move forward as well. Pop. T-3045 in the center here. Let's get one half track before it unloads. More mortar fire on the AA. This fight down here. Bunch of rifles versus a depleted now. Unit. I think the pencil strike is just gonna run out of uh, ammo before the stroke ADP. It would be quite funny. Almost the, the elf clan <laughs> actually <laughs> with the two FP40s, I was gonna say, it would do much better in that situation almost. Um, Strokies are reloading. That's what she kind of expelled his energy again. <laughs> okay, we gotta see an Auf Clara kill. <laughs> Two MP40s here. Oh, you never see this. Jeez. All that would be needed is just move the building out of the unit. One unit does go down if we see an Auf Clara <laughs> kill a Strelke DP. Oh, man. What a moment. Oh, gotta be careful here. Mm, T-345 doesn't quite have range. Or view sight, but... Uh, Nape of F on the road there, trying to reposition. As, ooh. These light armored cars, once again, the lack of armored support really coming into play here for Tanner. Multiple SPWs now push their way forward. And still no IS-2 or anything. No more heavier armor coming in. Tanner seeming to 
want to shore up his front line rather than play the long game here. Potentially his deck is quite a bit shallower. Because now, well, not only do have these two day fours doing good work here, cleaning up this infantry, you've got kinds of grenades that can come in quite close. Rosvetka trying to move forward. Mortar's coming down. Leave of effort completely empty now, actually. Bunch of smaller tanks here in the center, which is concerning, but the uh, Yakpatsa Foa will be more than enough to deal with it. This has enough armor. Like to be almost worth a panther, except it's 105 points instead of 150. Right? Like if we look at the armor values here, 130 to 130. T34 has a sense, no chance in that country, man. Preemptively shooting an area where nobody is. Ooh, and actually the artillery fire from the 37 mil gets the kill on the flak feeling there. Leaving the Boston to do whatever it wants, but the front line here is quickly evaporating. The 37 mil is not going to be able to fight back against any of this armor. And with the Panther here, you would need an AT gun or something, which he did bring in, but it did seem to go down over here. Panther shutting down that supply road. As even this red Resvedka comes down now. Mortar fire is still coming in on his own units from the looks of things. Uh, yeah, a couple minutes ago, things were looking quite good for Tanner. Not so much anymore. Just completely run out of things to throw at the enemy here. Not expecting it to go too long. Alfka. Uh, why didn't no Alfka get those small, crappy grenades? Apparently they do. Not that it matters. Pazashek does finish the job off. And those small, um, anti half track head grenades are quite finicky in this game sometimes. Some units have them, some some don't. They can only deal with half tracks. Um, so quite useful. This Yakpanza 4 now. T34 is trying to veer off at that range zone. Dual star Yakpanza. Just got the penetration. 37 mil is gonna go down here to the 230 one. Now there's this two coming in, trying to do something. This is actually out of APHE. <laughs> So just using its machine gun. I mean, that's how you know your armored cars have been effective. And these are actually the armored cars that uh, don't tend to run out of ammo that much. There's another uh, half track. It's just a 250 one with uh, 20 mil on it that you can get. But these 254s run quite a bit more ammo. Even this one's almost out of ammo here. Katusha's ready to fire again, but uh, Tanner's slowly being ticked down. Nibavafa, this time, shots on target and effective. Kaboom. So Piri goes down. Strelki also goes down. Got two more Strelki here to shore this up, but um, the armor went down to this Yak Pencil Fall. So, very easy flag to take there as the south basically evaporates. Panther A. Gotta be a little bit careful if that's this too, but T34, of course, no threat. And now, both 234s almost out of ammo. Katusha counter-battering the Nib of FF. Something that should have been done a lot sooner, I think. The um, movement of these have not been like the most effective in this game. Ooh, as we do see the Pioneer and another half-track go down, giving this flag back to Tanner for a temporary period. Stompania's, two-star Stompania is now coming in with half-tracks. It's actually interesting to see these with half tracks. His Stadex and the hot tech is um, just brimming with them, apparently. Oh, this is the one that has ammo in it. But uh, potentially, if this is free, can get confused. But no. Let's get the kill. Nice and clean. Doesn't even get shots off. Another T34 coming in. as well going down and this game is pretty much over so fast running through the end of it Tanner very quickly running out of things to put down got to get another t34 kill 59 reached 
This might be worth holding it out if this was uh, the 50 minute league rules. Unless he might be able to bring it back to 15 10, but he never ticked down Star Deck that much to begin with. Mortar does get the kill there on the AT again, and that's a surrender. 3,340 kills to 4,005 losses. Quite a good performance here from Star Deck. So, yeah. Interesting to see. Well, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.